This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The Quarantine Report. I am Amy Goodman in New York, with co-host Juan Gonzalez, who's joining us from his home in New Brunswick, New Jersey. Hi, Juan. Hi, Amy, and welcome to all of our listeners and viewers across the country and around the world. Well, we're going to start with the first big abortion case of the Trump era. The reproductive rights movement saw a major victory Monday when the Supreme Court struck down a restrictive abortion law in Louisiana that would have left the state with just one abortion clinic. The 2014 law required doctors who perform abortions to have admitting privileges at a hospital within 30 miles of their clinic. These privileges are often impossible for abortion providers to obtain due to anti-choice sentiment or because they don't admit enough patients to meet hospital minimums. Chief Justice John Roberts sided with liberal justices in the 5-4 to four decision. He indicated this was solely to respect court precedent. In 2016, the Supreme Court struck down a near-identical law in Texas. In that case, Roberts dissented. This is Planned Parenthood president and CEO Alexis McGill-Johnson responding to the ruling. You know, I think it's just a sigh of relief. You know, I, I had the pleasure of uh, being in the courtroom to hear the argument being um, uh, being heard, and uh, I, I, you know, really want to just first give credit to the Center for Reproductive Rights and and their work with June Medical and um, how how brilliantly and beautifully argued it was. Um, it means that women in Louisiana have access to abortion. You know, I do think the court was taking a stand, and I think um, particularly, you know, um, being in the room and um, listening to the, the questions by Justices Sotomayor and Ginsburg and Kagan, um, how, um, how they were actually able to make plain the burden that would be carried by people seeking abortion. Alexis McGill-Johnson is the uh, new permanent head of the Planned Parenthood Federation of America. Well, for more, we're going to Louisiana, where we're joined by Lakeisha Harris, director of Reproductive Health and Justice at Women with a Vision. She joins us from New Orleans. Welcome to Democracy Now!, Lakeisha. First, can you describe your reaction when you heard the news that Chief Justice John Roberts had joined with liberal justices in a ultimately pro-choice ruling? Uh, for, for me, for all of us, it was just a big, collective, deep sigh. Um, thank you, Amy and Juan, for having me. Um, it was a moment of elation. Um, many of us have been working years. Um, so this was justice in the making, and um, we cried together, and we celebrated. Uh, yeah, I wanted to ask you, in terms of this, uh, this ruling is very similar to a 2016 ruling by, this, uh, by, the, by the court in the case of uh, Whole Woman's Health versus Hellerstedt in Texas. Could you talk about the, this whole issue of undue burden that was in, involved in both the Texas case as well as this one? Yes. So um, undue burden means that you can't—that uh, lawmakers in the state cannot present anything that poses an undue or unjust burden um, to people seeking abortion care um, that was, you know, held up uh, in Texas. And uh, the Supreme Court justices held that same precedence here in Louisiana. And what that means for people on the ground who um, disproportionately don't have the resources, they're black and brown people, uh, the most marginalized in Louisiana, it means that they don't have a, um, uh, any blockage uh, in the road. Well, they don't have this blockage to get this law admitting privileges to get to abortion services. And under the law that was struck down, you, you've estimated that as much as 70 percent of the people who are seeking abortions in Louisiana would have had to travel more than 150 miles to get an abortion? And that is correct. And when you think about that, you're, th you're talking about uh, poor people who don't have the resources, usually. Um, and in a pandemic, we're thinking about the people who are most affected by COVID-19. Um, that is already disproportionately, disproportionately killing um, black and brown people in our state. Um, Lakeisha Harris, can you talk about 
what these admitting privileges do. I mean, it sounds like a technical point, but can you talk about how this plays out? Um, first, I wanted to go to Louisiana Solicitor General Liz Merrill, who defended Louisiana's anti-choice law. She was speaking to the Catholic station Eternal Word television network. Think about, like, a seatbelt law. We wouldn't let Ford Motor Company challenge a seatbelt law or, a, or an airbag law in the name of the people who are protected by that airbag. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just a conflict, I think, in the regulatory structure. These are health and safety regulations, and they have an interest in being deregulated or, or having less oversight. So she's talking about this as just a matter of uh, deregulation and uh, uh, <clears throat> having more oversight. Explain specifically what it means for a doctor to get privileges in a local hospital and why this shuts down clinics. So it's not just a matter of uh, deregulation. This is part of the numerous trap laws that they entangled uh, our providers in. Um, and so with that, it's like, you know, doctors uh, have to be connected to a hospital um, within 30 miles of the clinics. Um, and that has been such a, a, a daunting task for our providers. We only have three in the state, um, and they have tried to get, be connected to hospitals and have been denied or the process have been prolonged. Um, and that leaves us with little to no resources within our communities. These uh, physicians and clinics are uh, systematically under attack. And, and what has it meant to uh, women in the state in general in terms of this lack of access uh, to reproductive care? Can you talk about Louisiana's uh, high uh, maternal mortality rates compared to the yes, rest of the so country? We have a high mater maternal mortality rate. Um, I believe it's the second most um, mortality rate, with it being black wo black women dying uh, in childbirth, uh, four times more than white women in our state. And what that does is force uh, people into pregnancy when we don't have abortion access, and somebody wants abortion have, wants to have an abortion, it leaves a black woman staring down. Um, the injustice system that is our mater uh, maternal health system down here. It's, uh, it leaves them staring in the face of death. Uh, Lakeisha Harris, um, you only have three abortion clinics in Louisiana anyway. This would have closed it to one. Can you it talk about what this means in a time of COVID and how COVID has had a disproportionate impact on black and brown women and what that means for their reproductive health? Yes. Um, so we only have three clinics here. It would dwindle. This bill would have dwindled us down to one. That would mean that uh, black and brown women, as I have stated, uh, would have to travel, you know, uh, beyond this state. And we know that when, uh, in, during the pandemic and COVID, in the crisis of COVID, that leaves us uh, trying to figure out how no. we're going to stay, and le uh, how, where we're going to stay. Um, it leaves us scrambling for funds and money, um, and especially when we have a state that is a hot spot. Uh, when you travel abroad or beyond the state, you have you have a 14-day uh, wait that you have you might have to endure. Um, that's a time limit on on abortion access. Many of them are coming um, in need, and they need that care almost immediately because they're under time constraints in different uh, states. So. It, it has a financial impact. It has it's a stressor on people who are pregnant, um, and it's a, an unjust and undue burden that they have to endure. We just have 10 seconds, Lakeisha, but can you talk about the state constitutional amendment that will be voted on uh, by people by in November, Election Day? Yes, this was a proposed amendment to um, state that Louisiana does not support abortion access and that, um, that we uh, don't fund abortion access. And this is coming up on the ballot on November the 3rd in our presidential elections. Um, and like a lot of uh, presidents said, it has a, uh, not just a Louisiana 
impact, but a, a national impact. So get out and vote, people, please. Lakeisha Harris, want to thank you for being with us. So we'll continue to follow that, as well as the Supreme Court is expected any day now uh, to uh, uh, hand down its ruling on uh, contraceptives. And we'll report on that, and we'll um, you can go to our website to see the latest. Lakeisha Harris, Director of Reproductive Health and Justice at Women with a Vision, based in New Orleans, Louisiana. When we come back, we head to Jackson, Mississippi, to speak with the head of the NAACP. Mississippi has just struck down its Confederate flag, the last in the nation. We'll get the latest on that, President Trump's white power retweet, and more. Stay with us.